The thing about the Searson larvae is that they can look the same, but they can be really different underneath, just like a hamburger. Hi, can I have a double-double, please? Animal style, no sauce, ketchup and mustard, and another double-double with no cheese, regular onions, and extra pickles. Extra pickles? Yeah, extra pickles. Okay. okay. They're going to look so same. They're going to taste so different. This happens all the time in, in, in regular life. Lots of things look the same on the outside, but they're different on the inside. And the same approach applies to hamburgers and sea urchin larvae. This is a time machine. These specks are larval sea urchins. They're growing in an ocean chemistry that we expect to see in a century. This other bottle is today's ocean, normal seawater. And our experiment is to look at these two different conditions and how the larvae grow differently depending upon how much CO2 is in the water. Now, if you're a larva in a bottle, it's a, it's, a, it's a little claustrophobic, but the water in the bottle makes a huge difference. It's your world, it's your ocean, and the chemistry of that water makes a big difference to the ability of those larvae to grow and, and to turn into juveniles. And what we expected, given what we know about the effect of CO2 on ocean chemistry, it would cause these larvae to grow a lot slower. It would damage them. It would kill some of them. But these sea urchin larvae didn't die. Instead, the population evolved. What we saw in the cultures when we measured them in the microscope was that these urchins were growing in high CO2. They grew about 5% slower than in normal seawater but they were still doing pretty well. And so our question became, how did they do that? How did they deal with this environmental problem and not change? The larvae look very similar to one another depending upon what culture they're in, but they had different genes. They had inherited those genes from their parents, high CO2 conditions selected for certain combinations of genes in those cultures. How do we tell? We essentially open up the cells, pull out all the genes that those larvae are using, sequence them all, and compare them between cultures to see which genes were different in the high CO2 conditions. All across the ocean, everywhere in a century, all organisms are going to be facing this problem. We had an opportunity here because of our little, our little bottle time machine to find out how this species had the ability to deal with a problem that the whole ocean is going to face in a century.